Hello and welcome to another edition of Only in Illinois, your weekly video recap from Reboot Illinois. I'm Madeline Dubeck here with Matt Dietrich. And this week we thought we would talk about a couple of developments in the race for governor. Uh, it's been a few big developments this week. At the beginning of the week, the Legislative Audit Commission, which is really a panel of lawmakers, right. uh, voted to bring in five people who were involved in the uh, Neighborhood Recovery Initiative, which has become quite controversial. Uh, that's the program that was launched just before the 2010 election uh, by Governor Quinn and an audit earlier this year by the State Auditor General found that about $55 million was spent, divvied out to various neighborhood organizations in an attempt to quell violence and didn't really do much good and wasn't really monitored or right. measured in any way, shape, or form. And uh, the Auditor General's report found that the money simply wasn't tracked. They relied on uh, Chicago aldermen to tell them who to give the money to. Uh, this comes at a most inopportune time because just as when the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative was first started in the fall of 2010, Governor Quinn finds himself in a highly competitive re-election race. Exactly. And so a lot of maneuvering back and forth uh, this week in this commission hearing. Uh, Republicans want to have as many people paraded before this group testifying as possible so that they can drag things out from a political perspective and make Governor Quinn, the Democrat, look bad. Uh, and Democrats, of course, want this to be over with as quickly as possible and, you know, it's old news, let's move on. And so in the end, they decided that five of uh, the people who are involved uh, directly with this program will be testifying in a couple of weeks in mid-July before them. We'll see how long it lasts, but it, it's, you know, the story about the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative and this $55 million that went all over the place is just not ending. Right. So that's very damaging to Pat Quinn's campaign. And then in the meantime, uh, Republican Bruce Rauner put out step two of his plan to fix Illinois. Right. shake up Springfield, and this one dealt with what he called corporate welfare reform. He's got a three-part plan. Part one is imposing term limits. Uh, parts two and three we've seen. Oh, that's seen. right. Part two was the chickens. Part two was... That has to part do, three, actually. Right. Part two had to do with cutting waste in state government. Right. And he had a press conference at Midway Airport that featured three live chickens in a cage. And the substance of the press conference then was was pretty disappointing because it was a lot of ideas that we had heard before. It also wasn't the kind of savings that the state's going to need if income tax is cut. So this week, uh, uh, Bruce Rauner released the second part of the revenue, which is uh, uh, the second part of the revenue plan, which is new revenue streams. We talked about cuts the first time. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about new things. But again, uh, this wasn't particularly innovative. So he's talking about, toss a couple of examples out, he's, he's talking about closing tax loopholes he's talking to bring about, more money into the state. Correct. Uh, Number so one. Closing tax loopholes, another way to say that is increasing taxes for certain groups of people. Correct. Now one of the things that he talked about was stopping the process that seems to go on constantly in Illinois where some large corporation threatens to leave and therefore the state moves in and grants all kinds of tax credits. Sears, Office Depot. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now that we, we at Reboot Illinois have said that needs to change because it creates, it's unfair and it creates this unstable environment that is just not good for cultivating, cultivating business. Um, but House Speaker Michael Madigan tried to get that going Mm -hmm. in this session and then stepped away from it. Uh, that's not a particularly new idea, nor is it going to raise hundreds of millions of new dollars. Um, there were other things, uh, uh, Rauner suggested that if you are the surviving spouse and you inherit a yacht or a personal aircraft, 
you should have to pay a 6.25% use tax on that. Well, that's good too. That's probably fair. Um, how big of a market how is much, there how for much that? Is that going to solve our financial problem? I don't think that's going to bring in, you know, the five billion dollars we need to pay off our bill backlog, or the 1.8 billion that will be lost when the taxes fall, as Bruce Renner wants to happen. Uh, the other one is ending the uh, sales tax ex or the tax exemption for newsprint and ink for newspapers. It's not going to make Mr. Renner any friends in the newspaper industry, I don't think. Um, no. But he says it'll raise $32 million a year, which is fine. But again, you take $32 million, multiply it by 100, and you could pay off a little more than half of our unpaid bills right now. So we're not seeing revolutionary ideas here. One point that I made in a blog post this week was that really I think what we're seeing is the reality of, of the financial situation in Illinois. That and just how long, how big a hole we've dug for yeah. a long time. Now Bruce Rauner is running uh, this campaign based on uh, he's a very successful businessman. He's going to bring top business experts in. We're going to innovate in Illinois government. We're going to do things differently. But I think what we're finding here is that no amount of innovation is going to change the basic math of the Illinois budget problem. Um, the way I put it in my blog post was he's Bruce Rauner kind of built up expectations that, hey, I've got a new theory of relativity that I'm going to apply to state budgeting, and we're going to be able to fix this without feeling any pain. What he presented was basically one, one plus one equals two. You know, we're going to be in for a lot of pain, I think, and, and I don't think there's a painless uh, remedy to our current situation. There's new, no new equation to solve I, our problem. I don't think so. All right. Maybe that's part four. <laughs> We'll see, and we'll let you know about it if there is one. If you haven't checked out Matt's blog, be sure to do it. It's a great one at RebootIllinois.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next edition.